there as an entrepreneur that you want to consider or even as an employee what do you want to consider so you know i had to go into my arsenal of my friends and call my boy sam gizier aka sam geyser um to really talk about this we go way back we go way back at fulton county yeah. georgia you know getting people signed up right this week we go away. We did our dues. <laughs> we put in the, <laughs> you know, sitting in the classes for hours and learning. And we knew each other on social media for a while. And then we met when we got into the benefit, the benefits um, arena. And, you know, we hit it off like we do with social media. Like I knew, like my big brother, I kind of knew him for already. And then we got a chance to work <laughs> together and we just maintained that relationship. That's got to be almost 10 years, almost a decade ago if not a decade ago. Yeah. Wow. You're aging us now, so be careful. I know, right? Whatever, <laughs> you're old, I'm not. I'm just reversing. <laughs> but Sam, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Really, um, not just look at our business and how to grow our business, but look at where we are as far as our employment and our investment options and what we're doing and what we should be taking advantage of and consider whether we want to have a 401k, whether we have a 401k, and what are those ramifications and some investment options. So I know you're going to share that information and I'm excited about that, but tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience and then just go right into giving us these tips so we can um, continue to grow and prosper in our employment as an entrepreneurs as well. Okay. Uh... Thanks for having me on, Tyra. I was really excited when you hit me up about coming on your show because I do watch and follow your show and I've been following you since we uh, met many, many years ago. Um, I'm 20 years, 22 years in financial services, started out as an investment advisor, managing money, was doing pretty well, managing about 25, 30 million dollars, three years into the business. So I was series seven licensed, trading everything, commodities, options, stocks, working with money managers and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, then about middle, the middle part of my career, I just realized there was an empty feeling there because I wasn't, my mission was to help as many people as possible. At that level, I was only helping a certain amount of, of people. So I switched gears and uh, designed the business that I really wanted, which is educating people on, you know, what their options are in different areas of financial products and services. So, you guys see the title there says the uh, the ticking tax time bomb. <laughs> I'm really passionate about that because, and, and thanks for using the word bamboozle because we have been bamboozled uh, to a certain extent about the 401k. Now, I know a lot of people have been told the 401k is your retirement vehicle and all of that. So this is merely to educate. People get upset <laughs> when you go against things that they deem to be true and factual. There's nothing on the surface wrong with the 401k. Here's the problem though. When we look at what this country is doing and how it's managing its debt or lack thereof, that's the problem when it comes to the 401k and qualified retirement accounts. We're right now at $24 trillion with a capital T in fiscal debt. That's not your problem though. Your main problem is the unfunded liabilities. $144 trillion. Why, did, why should that matter to me, Sam? Because the government gets revenue from where? Us, from taxes, right? Taxation. We're historically at a, a low tax rate right now, 37%. Okay, historically low. The historical average is 57%. Now, what upsets me is when I meet a client that has a, an advisor that's telling them, oh, you're gonna retire, and you're gonna pay a lower tax bracket in retirement, you're gonna take out 4% of your portfolio. That does not work anymore, ladies and gentlemen. And the, the, the fact that there's all that debt out there that the government has to pay for, tax is gonna to have to go up, or this country's gonna go bankrupt. So they're gonna to have to get that money from us. There's trillions of dollars sitting in 401ks, and that money's that those taxes are deferred, and the IRS is waiting to get their money because they didn't take it from you uh, at the beginning. They're waiting later on to get that money. So taxes are going to have to go up. You're going to be possibly, and I can't predict the future, in a, a higher tax bracket in retirement than you were when you were working. So you're paying more in taxes means less income coming off of those 401k plans. Okay? Kind of make sense? 
Okay. So that's what I'm all about is, is trying to get people to move from that taxable retirement situation to a zero percent tax, uh, tax free income situation. These, there's some strategies out there that are not new. Uh, I wish I could say, hey, I invented this or whatever, but that's not me. There's some people that are way smarter than I am that are utilizing these strategies and also trying to get this information out to as many people as possible so you can avoid that train wreck that's going to happen when it comes to retirement and taxation. That's my main grab with the 401k. I don't really offer them anymore. Um, my career uh, as an investment advisor, I used to set them up for the company. So I know how they work and, and know what they do and all that, but there's no way around avoiding that taxation that's going to hit you like a freight train and you think you're going to have this, all this money in the bank. You know, right now we're at 37%, right? And typically, you know, the only way you can lower that tax bracket is you have a lower annual income, right? So you, you change tax brackets. Well, who wants to do that in retirement? You guys are dual producers for a reason, you know? <laughs> You're trying to set yourself up for a nice, comfortable retirement so you can do whatever you want to and it takes money to do that. That's not going to happen uh, going down the trajectory that a lot of people are going with the qualified accounts. You want me to keep going, Tara? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and one of the other things, I, I, we, there's a disconnect when I'm talking to people because we kind of, and it's, it's, it's on purpose, I believe. We forget that the government money, government spending, that's our money. You know, we should really be speaking up about that. That's, we the people are the government. We are paying into the government's bank account, so to say, so they can spend. So whenever I hear them spending about or sending money to XYZ country and all that, we have all these problems over here with debt and, and homelessness and all that, it should you know, spark a nerve with people, but there's a disconnect there. And I think that's one purpose. Then we got politicians in here just pushing the issue to the side, down the road, so to say. So they don't have to worry about it. They're just waiting on future generations to worry about it. But now is the time in this low interest rate environment to start moving your retirement money over into vehicles that are going to give you that 0% or close to 0% tax income as much as you possibly can. One of the main ones we're using for that is a Roth IRA. So it's a different concept, right? Instead of putting money pre-tax, you're putting it after tax. Listen, you wanna adopt the mindset of paying tax on the seed, not the harvest. You're gonna pay more tax on the harvest. When you use that Roth IRA, that money is growing tax-free, you take it out tax-free. I'm sorry, it's growing tax-deferred and you take it out tax-free. The biggest plan that we use for this uh, 0% uh, power of zero tax bracket is called the life insurance based retirement account. You know, guys, when the 401k was first introduced, it wasn't the only regulation uh, that the IRS came out with to uh, help with pension plans. And the pension plan was the, the best retirement plan out there. We don't see them anymore. And we definitely don't see them uh, the way they were first initially um, devised. Our grandparents or great grandparents, you know, they really had a great pension that they retired, they were able to, you know, still do what they wanted to do, those are long gone. So when the 401k came out, all of these other plans came out with it. It was designed to supplement the pension. By the way, the pension, which is the only thing uh, that can give you a guaranteed income stream for the rest of your life is a life insurance product, it was an annuity. That's what pensions are. So all these other programs, along with the 401k, were designed to supplement the pension. Somebody got a wild, a wild idea, you know what, we're gonna do away with the pension because it's a liability for the company. So they sent out this memo that most people didn't get that we're not taking care of you anymore. We don't care if you work for us 20, 30, 40 years, you know, it's, you're on your own. So we're now moving over towards this consumer defined benefits scenario where you gotta take care of it. So we introduced the 401k, you got to manage the 401k. You got to pick your, your mutual funds. And you got to decide on what you want to do with it. A lot of people didn't get that memo. We talked to people on a daily basis that, you know, had in their 401k and they're in fixed accounts. So they're not earning anything in the 401k. Why? Because the HR departments no longer educate employees on that. So all that money is just sitting there growing. I mean, it's this nightmare stories that we hear 
And people think you're going to have all this money doing retirement, and they're, they're not even properly um, funded inside that 401k or allocated, I should say, inside that 401k the right way. A whole, it's a whole mess. But all we know, all people know that have a job is, oh, start your 401k. We got the match. The only way we have a conversation about the 401k, if you have a decent match with your company, go ahead and take that match. But we want to have as little as possible in that bucket. It's about three buckets of money we're going to talk about. The first is that taxable bucket, uh, where you, everything you invest in in that bucket is taxable. Your, your CDs, your mutual funds, uh, what have you, that's all taxable. Really, you want to have as little as possible in that bucket, okay? And, and some experts say you should have six to eight months of emergency funds in that bucket. That's where that, that money should be kept. The second bucket is, is your 401k, your tax deferred bucket. Your 401ks, your SEP IRAs, your simple IRAs, you know, your 403bs, they're in that second bucket of tax deferral. You want to be careful there because you don't want to stockpile a lot of money in there based on what I just told you about the tax training coming, the tax time bomb coming to erode all of that money in that 401k. Even though I'm harping on uh, taxes and everything, there's an even bigger issue which comes to fees. Uh, fees are really, <laughs> um, a lot of people don't realize the average fees for mutual funds range from three to 0.4 to about 5.6%. And it's tearing up those 401ks, even though it's a tax deferred scenario. The third bucket is which we're trying to show people how to get to is that tax-free bucket. And there's only two ways to do that. I already mentioned the Roth IRA, uh, Roth IRA and uh, a permanent life insurance policy that has the IRS regulations attached to it that allows that policy to grow money tax deferred and you take it out tax free. And with it being a life insurance policy, it has more benefits than just giving you a tax free bucket of money that you can use for retirement. Okay. Um, do we have any questions so far, Tower? I just want me to keep going. No, um, I don't have any questions. I, you know, of course, I, I know this, but. Um, uh, I'm sure you're going to get into it that when there's, you know, the life insurance portion of it and how to use that as an investment tool. Um, and I'm really big on using life insurance while you're still alive. There is a way to leverage life insurance while you're still alive. It's not about death insurance. It's not about death all the time. It has a death benefit. But the life insurance, if you, you get the right one, it's to leverage, leverage your lifestyle while you're still alive and protect your family in the event of your death. And so when you look at life insurance like, um, like that, you realize that it's not really something scary to talk about. It can be something really excited to talk about because now you are adding to that investment, that tax-free investment portal or that you know, bucket that will ultimately protect your family in the future that can fund your retirement and can have some living benefits if you get sick. So I know that you're going to go into that, um, but you are the expert today. So I want you to go ahead and share some information. <laughs> you, you, you pretty much just did. So we're, we're not talking about our grandparents, you know, $15,000 term policy, your whole life policy. Uh, actually, we don't really focus on those. We focus on what Tara just mentioned. Those living benefits are huge because let's face it, a lot of people are getting sick prematurely. A lot of people are living a long time on a chronic illness or a critical illness. You can tap into that policy to pull out a stream of income so you can worry about getting better and well instead of worrying about losing your home or how you're going to feed yourself and the family. So it's more than one benefit of just the tax free cash flow that it generates for you. You got the death benefit that's going to also generate these living benefits that you can use right here, right now, if you so need them. Also, you don't have to wait for those funds to access them during retirement. Something major happens up, some kind of financial emergency, you can pull money out of it for that as well. So it's a life insurance policy. When we use those words, people get scared. Oh, it's only going to kick in when I die kind of mentality. But this policy is different. You have all these features that you can access and use while you're still here. And guess what? When you do pass away, you can leave a nice legacy to your family. Okay, even after you pull out, you know, whatever you need to pull out for before uh, retirement, even when you pull out your retirement income, it's designed first and foremost as a life insurance policy. So by default, it has to have a death benefit to it. So you can pull out tons of retirement tax-free income. 
you have a sickness or illness, you can use the living benefits portion of it, and it just keeps chugging along and doing its thing for you. That's awesome. Absolutely. So um, now, you know, it, it, when I, I still have a licensed insurance agent, I don't sell it anymore, um, but I keep my licenses to help educate. And I know that there are several different options out there as far as life insurance is concerned to leverage um, the retirement savings side of it, as well as the living benefits side. And um, talk a little bit about the differences between the whole life. I know a lot of people are familiar with whole life. Um, the uh, variable, <clears throat> life, you know, the variable life insurance products. And then our favorite, you love it, hate it, whatever the index universal <laughs> life products. Um, and, you know, I'll share what my um, perspective is on those, but share a little okay. bit about the differences and how they, you can leverage them. Because a lot of people think that, oh, I'm going to put this money in a life insurance. And then if I take the money out, I'm not going to have a death benefit. And that's not the case as well. No. Um, so right. go ahead and, and share a little bit about what the difference, we kind of know what the term is. Term is like renting an apartment. You pay mm -hmm. into it for a certain amount of time for your lease, and then when your lease is up and the and your you know the rent goes up, you can leave or you can renew the lease. Um, but you know once that lease is ended, you know you either have to move or you have to re up it. So, but there's a difference between the whole life, the permanent, and the variable, as well as the index. Correct. So whole life is for your whole life. Okay. Typically they um in what's called endow at age 100 some of them will go over 100 not many they'll typically go to age 120 or 121 if you're so blessed to live that long but typically they uh last to age 100 they have a guaranteed interest rate attached to them so that's how they are crediting the account with interest okay uh you have that life insurance death benefit now you might have heard of whole life because a lot of people utilize certain whole life policies for that concept of uh, uh, making your own bank. Uh, but you gotta have the right policy to make that happen. It has to be structured the right way. I think from my last uh, research, there's a couple of companies that do that extremely well. I don't really utilize that strategy, uh, that product for that strategy, but that's what the whole life can be used for. Also, when we walk around here and people selling these burial plans, those are whole life policies, but they're the lower death benefit of 10, 15, up to $35,000 or so. That's a whole life policy as well, because this is designed to last the whole life uh, of, the, of the person getting it or the insured um, individual. Then we go into the next stage. If you look at evolution of the life insurance policy, term, whole life, then we get into variable life. I'll just uh, keep on the same vein that you, you said, Tara. Variable life gets a little bit interesting. So you, it's still a life insurance policy, but now what they've done is added what's called the sub accounts. They're mutual funds. Okay, so now you have access to invest into the stock market with those variable accounts, but there's some risk involved with those, right? I haven't even discussed a variable life insurance policy since probably 2006, 2007. Um, there's still a couple of companies that offer those, a couple of A-rated companies, by the way, uh, but I really don't offer those as well. Now, the one, the, the next one is the individual, I'm saying individual, index universal life insurance policy, which is my uh, uh, one I'm talking about all the time because of all of the benefits, and we can do so much uh, uh, for different scenarios when we structure those policies. So with that policy, Again, you still have the pure life insurance there, right? But now you have access to uh, the market via uh, an index. You have access to the market, but you're not in the market. How do they do that? They're utilizing options. I'm not gonna get too technical with the options, but they're going out and they're buying options. Uh, when they have a return on those options, they're creating you a portion of that return, okay? And if they have, if they lose money on the options, you get something called a 0% return. That's what we call the power of zero. So if you picture being in the market, when the market goes down, you're realizing that negative return for that year. With this, with this program, you're not. That zero is saving you from ever having a negative return. And also it's locking in that gain for the year. When you're in the market, the only way you can lock in the gain is if you sell the shares or sell the mutual fund. 
that's why this thing is 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 it's in that bucket we call the safe money bucket, okay? But it's giving you a whole lot more return than other safe money, money investors would give you. So that's my take on all three of those, Tara. I'm okay. interested to hear yours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I have experience in all three and I can sell all three. I can kind of convince anyone to get either one. Um, but I'm gonna give you my, my truth on all three okay mm -hmm. so with the whole life you're absolutely right it's like mortgaging your home right you pay a mortgage and you know some of that mortgage goes to the insurance and interest and the other portion goes to your principal and the more you pay on the mortgage the more goes to principal over time so that's the same thing with a whole life policy you have your premium and then you have some some money that's going to go to the maintenance of the policy and then you're going to have some that's going to go to the actual insurance policy and then you're going to have some money that goes into what's called your cash value or your principal if you will and the longer you have the policy the more money goes into that principal so you can grow it over time so a whole life policy is not something that you want to tap into within the first two to five years that's not that, that type of policy it is something where you know you, you it's a great tool to use for college college savings right you have a child the child is born you get a policy on them immediately because there's no health um reviews on them uh you get it while it's really cheap and you pay a hundred dollars a year or whatever that's going to go into your cash value. So when it comes time, when they reach 18, 21, there's going to be a stack of cash there. You can use it towards their college. You can use it towards, you know, whatever. The great thing about having the cash value is that you don't have to have a specific reason uh, to use the money versus if you use college savings funds, that it has to go to college either for the child or for a designee. So the life insurance fund, you can use it to start a business. You can use it for, for down payment on their home. You can do it for their first car, whatever. So, I mean, I have a client that used to use those whole life policies. They, he purchases them when they're children. When they get to 16, that's how he buys his first car. He was able to send his child uh, overseas and that, that's how he uses it because he builds the bank of that child or the bank of you, right? With that cash value. So it, it's a great safe tool because it's, also, it's almost like a savings account that gives you a higher yield and the interest because it's not based on the market and then if you get one if you get a mutual type of a, a company like a, a mass mutual or a mutual just means that the it, the policyholders own the insurance company right they usually have a the name mutual in there somewhere to say that they give dividends so not only are you getting the interest on the savings of the policy but you're also getting dividends so if they do well you do well similar to stock stock markets you want to get into stock with a company that also provides dividends right so that is a whole life policy the next one is the uh, variable policy I call that uh, a term policy for life well no no the um what's the other one not the variable what is the other one universal yes, it's universal life universal the universal life is a I call it a term policy for life right so that, mm -hmm. that, that insurance could go up over time as you get older, but you're building the cash, cash value. And they're giving you a premium that's like midstream, right? So mm -hmm. if you're 100, it's going to cost you $300. But if you're you know, 21, it's going to cost you $20. They're going to find a number in the middle. You pay 150 or so. And so that premium is to not only build cash value, but it's to pay the premium for when you get older and your, pre your premiums are um, higher later on that's why i do not like universal life policies because people treat it as a whole life policy take the cash out and then they get a statement saying oh your policy is now 300 dollars a month and they they lapse on it so i would not recommend that your variable universal life is the same process but that money instead of going into a savings account goes into an investment tool this is good if you want to start playing in investments or whatever you can try this, but I would say work with an insurance advisor or an investment advisor for that. But there's been a lot of people that got burnt for that because if the market crashes, it wipes out your cash value. Now you're stuck with having to pay the increase in premiums. So you want to be very careful with those. And like Sam mentioned, I don't even 
promote um, or whatever. I, Universal Life's never really got into it. It's for a specific type of person that's very disciplined and understand what that policy is. Now the Index Universal Life, I can play it on, um, I can sell you on it and I can sell you off of it. But like Sam says, the ideal of it is that you're putting money in the market so you're taking advantage of the win of the market but zero is hero. If the market crashes, you just don't earn any money, right? So the market's been crashing. It's been falling three, you know, a thousand points, you know, 3000 points, whatever. So a lot of people in their 401ks are getting hit and they're losing money in their 401ks. Those that have the index universal life, they're not losing the money. They're just not making any interest on it. So it's almost get it being in a, sa a, a savings account, not earning any interest, but when the market goes back up, they're going to be able to take advantage of the upswing of the market. And the great thing for that is that you're always going to earn, usually, you're going to usually earn more interest and possibly dividends in an index universal life policy than you were in a standard um, savings account, right? So you want to look at it in a perspective of what, how much money do I want to earn in the future? What do I want to have in the future? And is a savings account going to do it? Am I ready for the stock market? Or do I want something where I'm playing, playing along with the market, but not really being affected by a negative downturn of the market? And again, you need to talk to professionals like Sam Gizier or Geyser, whichever way you want to say it, to help educate you on your options. Because there are some clients that I will not present an IUL or Index Universal Life to them. It's not for everyone. There are some people that are just aren't ready for a whole life policy. They're not mentally ready and they're not financially ready or disciplined for a whole life policy because they'll want to dip into it too soon. Or once they dip in it, they want to lapse it. And then once you lapse it and you take that money out, now you're going to be taxed on that money. So you got to be very, very careful with those things. But there are so many different options, especially, and this is my last point, especially with dualpreneurs and entrepreneurs right? So if you don't have a 401k, you can relatively use an IUL or a whole life policy to help save for your, for your future as far as retirement is concerned. You don't necessarily have to be in the market. It may be beneficial. And right now, I believe getting in the market is good because everything's on sale. And if you can not look at the market every single day and all the bad news and you get up as much as you can, the market is eventually going to go back up. But I believe in diversification of your portfolio. So you have some in the market, you have some in bonds and safety, and then you have some in life insurance. Most millionaires, they do not die and use people to bury them with their own money. They use OPM. They use other people's money to put in the ground so they can give their family all of their cash and the trust. Because if you think about how much it's going to cost to bury you, uh, right now, it's going to be, you're either going to burn it up or you're going to put it in the ground. 10000 at least. That's $10,000 your family could have used to supplement their lifestyle versus, you know, putting it in the ground. But again, life insurance is not just about the death aspect. It is all about the living benefits. It's life insurance. What are you going to do with your life insurance while you're alive and have a plan with it? Woo, that's my soapbox. Sam, he looks like he, um, he looks like he, uh, oh, he's coming back on. But <clears throat> that, that's really all I have to say about that. If you have questions about life insurance, it's, it's very important to, that you think about that, um, li the life and the life insurance, and you talk to a life insurance agent or an investment advisor that will educate you. Don't keep going to these people that just want to sell you a product, sell you a product, right? Because um, even when I was selling life insurance, there's a lot of people that came to me and they told me what they wanted. They told me, look, I want, them, I want one of them IULs. My cousin got an IUL. I want one of those. And it just wasn't a good fit. So I wouldn't sell them the product. I talked them out of it because I know that's what you want. But ultimately, ultimately it's not going to be a good fit for your situation. It may have been good for um, Nana and them, but it's just not right for you. So you need to find someone that's going to be honest with you <clears throat> about life insurance investments and not just try to sell you a product, okay? 
So that's what I have to say about that. But as Sam was saying, this is the time, you know, the 401ks, he's absolutely right. If we're at the lowest part of our, you know, tax bracket right now. Taxes are going to go up. They have to. They're giving away all of this money right now. Think about it. The government is giving all of this money right now. Where are they getting the money from? Hmm. They, they just printing it? No, it doesn't work that way. People think, oh, they can just print some more. No, that's why there's a debt. <laughs> there's, a, there's a debt little cycle there, right? So they have to pay it back. So they're using our money and then they're borrowing money they don't have. So that puts them in debt. And so now they're going to have to pay it back. Well, how are they going to pay it back? Well, we're the ones that fund the government. So they're going to ask us for, they're not going to ask us for a raise. They're going to take a raise, which means they're going to increase our taxes. And can you imagine being taxed at 50 something percent? So you make 50,000, but you're really only bring, going to bring home $25,000 after taxes because they're going to have to pay this money back. So instead of waiting to a tax deferred where you're going to pay more taxes on your money, you need to start putting that money aside somewhere where it's already been taxed at the lower tax bracket. And then you can take the money out later with no taxes because you've already been taxed on it. So you have to think strategically when you're talking about your future, not just as an individual and employee, but as an entrepreneur as well. You don't want to have to pay more taxes because you're going to be making all of this money as an entrepreneur. You're going to increase your tax bracket. You're working, you get that salary, and as a dualpreneur, now you have your business and you're going to start making more money. That's going to leap you to a new tax bracket. So you want to be very cognizant of how that affects you. If you don't know, start talking to an accountant. We have accountants in dualpreneur. Um, start talking to professionals, investment advisors um, like Sam uh, or, you know, insurance agents. Sam is an insurance agent. We have another um, friend in the community that's insurance agents. So start asking questions about that and how it's going to benefit you. And don't ignore it because time is moving very fast and you're going to be retired or want to retire sooner than later. And retirement is not a dollar. It's not a number. It's not an age number. It's a dollar amount. How much do you need to be able to retire and do what you want and then figure out how to get to that dollar amount? So it looks like Sam had some technical difficulties. It's okay. I understand the internet is flaky. But before we go, um, Michi, my writer, Dachik, did you have any questions? I'm trying to unmute you. There you go. Yeah, you my, go. my internet has been going in and out too it's been sketchy today yeah um no i need to really um look at my insurance policies it's been a while since i um looked at those and just make sure that i have the right um products still and yeah it's a lot <laughs> that's a very good point michi that you know, on a regular basis, whether it's annually, you need to do a checkup. You need to review the insurance policies to make sure, one, you have enough as far as coverage is concerned, two, the beneficiaries. There could have been things. You could have got married, could have had a child, you could have got divorced. Um, there are several things. So you want to make sure those uh, beneficiaries are definitely updated um, frequently or on a regular basis, or they stay the same. And then three, what is the purpose of the life insurance? The life insurance that you got five years ago may have been for one pur purpose, but now you have a family, so it's for another purpose. Or now you really want to start a business. Or now you want to create an exit strategy to leave your job. And so what are you going to do? Or you have life insurance just with your job, but you're planning on leaving your job. So if you plan on leaving your job, you're going to need life insurance for when you leave. So you want to have something in place so you don't have to worry about that. Those are things you really need to think about it. And it's one of those things, if you think about it and you set it up, you set it and forget it. That's not something you got to think about again until you just do a, re a review of it. It's like going to your doctor for a physical exam. You know, if you do it right and you stay healthy, you don't have to see them for a while, but you want to go for a regular exam to make sure your numbers are in place and that you're healthy. And then after you do your physical exam, then you go about your business. It's the same thing with your money health. You know, we, we deal with our personal health, but we also have financial health as well that we need to take care of, not just as employees, but also as entrepreneurs, because that's a diff whole different mindset. An entrepreneur mindset is a whole different mindset than an employee mindset. 
And so if you're both, if you're an employee, but you have an entrepreneurial mindset, you've got to start thinking like an entrepreneur. What if your job, you know, you decide to leave your job or your job decides to leave you? What, how is your business going to be able to sustain your lifestyle now and five years, 10 years, 20 years from now? Those are things we need to talk about and think about. So that's a very good point, Michi. Thank you for mentioning that, that we have to review that on a regular basis. Just one, make sure is it the st still the same product? Like you have a term policy now, the term is about to end. Do you want another term policy or do you want to convert that to a whole life policy? And can they convert that for you? You know, right. so that's definitely a great point. You're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> cool and if you all have any other questions please sure make sure that you post them below sam or myself will answer any questions that you have either about your 401k investment options as well as life insurance and using your life insurance for life while you're still alive before we go michi tell everybody about yourself and how they can find you yes i am michi renee i am an intuitive life and business coach I help women entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs um, monetize their skills, gifts, and talent in fun and aligned ways. I am a different type of coach because I use a hybrid approach, um, life, personal development, inner work, as well as focusing on business aspects. So you're going to get the total package. Um, my tribe is called the Unicorn Tribe. You can find me on social media under U-N-I-K-O-R-N. T-R-Y-B-E, holla at your girl. Holla, and my name is Tara Jackson, AKA Madam Money. You may know me as a personal financial expert and commentator on news shows like Al Jazeera, Fox News, and yes, I've been on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show a couple times. Um, wake up with Eric Campbell and Griff, and we are gonna have Griff coming on soon. Um, but what you probably didn't know is that I help businesses look like Fortune 500 companies online. I have a website company called SRJ Websites or SRJ Business Solutions, and we believe that every small business should be able to look like a Fortune 500 company online regardless of their size and if you'd like to learn more about this or see um talk about your website project just go to srj websites srj websites with an s.com and schedule a consultation would love to have a conversation with you thank you so much for joining us again i love you all there's nothing you can do about it and come on michi don't forget y'all wash them hands bye-bye